Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. You regulars will know what this is. This is our Macrotheli Gigas, the Japanese funnel web. Now this is part three in a series of videos that we've done. and we The first one was the very first um, pairing of this particular spider. And um, as far as we're aware, these have never been bred here in the UK. So it's quite an important sort of uh, job that we uh, we try and get on and, and try and achieve this. Now we did pair them a second time and uh, we thought from there that we might well have had a, uh, a successful pairing. She did disappear. She disappeared on the 7th of the 11th. So uh, November, on the 7th of November she disappeared. But then the other day when I was checking, I've left this spider entirely alone. I, I don't touch her. I didn't want to disturb her. And I left her completely alone. And every now and again I would just take a little look from a distance and I thought I could see a couple of extra legs. So I'm almost certain that she's molted out. Which is bad news on the breeding front, but we've learnt an awful lot. So what we're going to do now is we're going to rehouse her in this because this was basically a temporary enclosure that we uh, created for her. And then because we paired her, I decided to leave her in here because she'd made this her home. Um, now is a good opportunity if she has molted we can get a set up in a nice a nice new home so she can go up on the shelf with all the others so what we're going to do we're going to move her out of the way because I know sitting on the edge of the desk here gets you guys worried no need it's not going anywhere right we're going to put her down on the floor and we're going to set this up this is a Komodo 30 by 30 by 30 which is perfectly adequate for this sort of thing. Oh, that's a bit of a thing, isn't it? I can't get in. Hold on. Here we go. So what we're doing now is we're just going to literally put our clay balls in. And we're going to set her up as, as a bioactive. And that's because these guys do like a, a real good humidity. Now don't forget, these balls is not an excuse to soak your enclosure. These balls are actually, they're clay, and they're designed to actually absorb the water. So they soak the water up into them, and then they gradually release it again, which is what gives us our humidity. So we don't want to be seeing water in here. Dark coloured balls is fine, but we don't want to be seeing water. So we just put our membrane on there. This is so that we can um, literally just stop our soil from disappearing down into the clay balls and clogging it all up. We're going to use just regular, cheap old regular potting compost this. That's all it is, nothing special. So we're going to fill it up. Now, although these guys are absolutely awesome webbers, they do like to burrow a little bit as well. So we're going to stick a reasonable amount of soil in there. Stick a bit of there. Right. And what we're going to do, we're going to add some beastie substrate as well. Look at that beautiful stuff that is. Now this is all collected from the wild. We don't do nothing with it. Look, it's full of all these leaves. There's oak leaves. These are all rotting down. There's spring towels, isopods. There's everything in here. Absolutely gorgeous stuff. And like I say, we collect all this from the wild. So this is all natural, natural ingredients. You don't need a fancy wrapper to make a lovely enclosure. Right. Also, you'll see there that by adding the, the beastie mix, it also gives our potting compost a little bit of structure, if you like, a little bit of body. Right, so what we're going to do now, we've got, um, we've got a lovely piece of wood here. I'm hoping that we've got these different holes here in the wood. I'm hoping she's going to use this as her main entrance. 
but we will see. We can only try and encourage her to do so. We can't make her do anything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to place that in there like that. And then what I would like to do, I'm going to put a plant in here. I'm not 100% sure it's, it's practical really because like I say, these guys, they do web up enormously, as you've seen in her old enclosure. She's webbed that to hell. I mean, there's no, no spare space in there. But what we're going to do, we're going we're gonna to put this in here with the hope that maybe it will get a foothold and grow then maybe what we can do as well is we can literally trim back some of the webbing that she does. That's the idea. Whether that will work or not is an entirely different thing. But we can do but try. Right, so what we're doing is, you see, we want to see a bit of wood. Keep it nice and uh, decorative. We can clear this out. Made a right old mess of this, haven't we? Look. So we can literally clear this out. Now she's got that access hole there, which is what I'm really, really hoping she's going to use. All being well. And we can tuck our plant in here. Bit of luck, he'll get himself sorted out and organised. And then we've got that. We need a water bowl. I do like these water bowls. These are these are really good. You'll notice on a lot of my enclosures, especially my arboreal enclosures, I do favour the milk bottle lid, which is a nice, cheap, effective water bowl. But with spiders like these, they need a little bit more depth. And I do like these. These are absolutely great. We can put that in there. We can fill that up. Now we might find later on that we actually need to move this water bowl around because she might well decide to throw everything out and bury this corner. She might bury that corner. We don't really know. So we're going to have to play it by ear. Now we've got some moss here that we've collected. Again, completely untreated. We've just placed that in there. And once again, this might well prove to be a bit of a waste of time. Because she, she probably will just web everything up. What we're going to do is we're going to place some up in the top here as well. In the hope that it will seal this top area in. Maybe encourage her to go where we want her to go. Right. I think that will do for now. And that is it. We're going to keep it nice and simple. Right. What do we think to that? That looks quite nice. Now then. Here we are. Here's our girl. Now, unfortunately, we are going to have to destroy this in order to get her out. Now what we've done is we have cleared our desk. There is no clutter on this desk now. All we've got is our, our tank here. We've got our catch cup and we've got our paintbrush. There is nothing else around. So should she bolt out, then she should be contained within this table and we can deal with her nice and effectively. Now, in order to make life a little easier, these guys cannot climb glass. So what we're going to do is we are going to trim the webbing from around the edge of the glass. And in that way, she cannot make a bolt straight up the sides and be gone. So we're edging our bets, really. She's down inside the wood. Now, before I um, crack on and empty this out, why don't you have a nice close look and see just exactly what she's done. 
absolutely stunning. There's all these different entrances here. There's one here. This is a main entrance. We have another one there. And she is residing just down in the front there. So she's literally under here. You can see where we put moss in here before. It hasn't done well. It's not getting enough light, and this is because of all the webbing. And as you can see, there's no spiderlings running around here. So I'm pretty sure she has molted out. So what we're going to do, we're going to very strong, very strong webbing. Now, as we said before, this is a funnel web. And this isn't, this isn't the same as the Sydney funnel web. The Sydney funnel web is a very, very dangerous spider. Got very potent venom. These guys are not as powerful. They're not as toxic as the Sydney funnel web. But you do really need to treat these guys with some serious respect. They are still what we class as, as a medically significant spider. So if you get bitten by one of these, it really is not going to be very pleasant. So we have to watch our fingers. Now, one thing I will say to you guys, if there's any of you viewers out there who've got funnel webs, you're watching this video, don't necessarily do exactly as I do. I've been doing this a very long time and I'm fully aware of what's going on in this tank. And I would hate for you to just see me do something and think, oh yeah, that's a good idea, I can do that. Always work to your ability and your means. So if you're not fully comfortable, think about what you're doing and change what you're doing. Now, I'm very, very comfortable around these sorts of things. It doesn't worry me in the slightest. But don't take that for being, um, what's the word? We're being very, very careful. So we're not being um, slack with what we're doing. And what we're doing now is we are taking this webbing out. Now, one of the things you'll find with these guys, there she is, she's right under there. So we know exactly where she is. And if you can see her, she is just in there. If I perhaps move this around, you might just see her. You can see her legs here. Can we see that? We get a, a nice... See her now. now. This is the first view we've had of her since we paired her. So what we're going to do now is we're going to carry on removing some of this web for our own safety. Here she comes. She's on the move now. So we're going to take this out. And what we're doing is we're just clearing around where she is. Because we really don't want her using this web to be able to fly out of this enclosure. Now, so far we've seen no aggression. She's not showing any signs of aggression yet. Now, these do have a, a reputation for being ultra-aggressive. But if we handle them carefully and sympathetically, we will see a different side to them. We've got to be careful now because this is down on this side is the entrance to where she was. Here she comes. She's put on some real size. She is huge. It's good. We're still clearing it up. There we go. That's what we're looking for. There we go. This is what we didn't really want to find. This is her old malt. You can see the size of those fangs on there. Huge great things. Now whenever we're doing um, any breeding, any pairing attempts, that is the last thing we ever want to see, is a molt. Because we know for then that that particular episode is over with and we can't do no more. Get a lovely shot of her there, she's beautiful. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take all this stuff out. We're going to work around her. Take this. You see how we're slowly but surely deconstructing 
her home. But what we're doing is we're making it very, very safe for us. Nice and steady. So what we're going to do now, we're going to move her around like so. And we've got two pieces of wood here. And we're going to take this top piece away. This top piece of wood is actually giving her a sense of security because she feels like she's hiding underneath it. If you can see through there. That's a little bit better, isn't it? Right. So what we're going to do, we're going to have our catch cup ready. We're going to lift out this piece here. Bearing in mind these are very, very fast. Now this piece is actually attached to the bottom webbing. So we've got to remove it very, very carefully. We don't want to lift, a, lift the whole web up with her on it. There we go. That's that piece out of the way. So far so good. There you go. Wasn't she a, isn't she a beautiful spider? And you'll see there that we've we've had absolutely no aggression so far. None at all. None at all. You'll also notice in here, where this is a sealed unit, this is a form of mould here. And this has actually come about because it's on top of the boluses from where she's been feeding. And these break out. These are nothing to worry about. I often see people ripping their enclosures apart because they've got a little bit of mould. This sort of mould is not dangerous to your spider. It's perfectly fine. Alright, so what I think what we're going to do now, we've got this lovely area here in the front, which is clear, which is what we need. And as you can see, we can get our box in here. So I think what we're going to do is we are going to try and get her to move backwards very gently. And then we can get the catch cup on top of her so that we can box her up. So here goes. We'll see now. We're trying not to get any aggression. We don't want any aggression. There you go. She's gone immediately into a threat display. You can see there how she rolls herself backwards. And she is now, now performing what we call a threat display. Now these guys will actually sit in this position for a length of time because that they will hold that position. This is something they do. This is something that's very, very common with these particular spiders. This is a good opportunity to get any photographs. Because we can never get enough photographs of our funnel webs because they are absolutely stunning. So now we've got to move slightly backwards. We have got enough room here to be able to get the box on. And this is where her threat display will work against her because she will sit tight until she feels the box coming down on top of her. So what we do is we make sure that the box follows along the wood here. So we want the length of the box that way. We want the box to go flush to the floor. So what we're going to do, we're going to go very, very gently. Now you've got to be careful with your fingers now because she can move lightning fast. But we don't want to hurt her. So we've got to be very careful. So we go down nice and gently. All the way. If we go nice and slow and gentle, she won't react quite so harshly. And here you go. You see how she manages to get her feet outside of the box. We don't want that. And there you go. She is securely there. So what we're going to do now... You see we've caught some of the web as well. This is a solid mat. So if I try and lift this wood out now, we will lift the box and so release the spider. So what we're going to do now is we are going to hold the box with just enough force to keep it fixed to the floor. We're going to move the wood. You see how it's moving the webbing away from underneath the box? We can do that. Swap hands. There you go. We've now removed the rest of the enclosure. Everything that was going to be awkward to us. 
So now, this is the beauty of this type of catch cup, the cricket box. I love them. What I'm do, we're going to move it this way a little bit. And then we're going to come in here. And we can do, you see, we can move it. And now what we can do is we can walk her to the lid, ensuring that we keep our edges of the box here within the lid. There we go, nice and gently. She's not going to like being on there because it's a slippery surface. And then what we do is we just click the corners in for our own safety. And there you go. One boxed funnel web with almost no aggression. Although she gave a threat display, which was pretty much what we were expecting. We were expecting that threat display where she threw herself backwards. She shows all her fangs and she means business. And you see how quick she went from being sat calm to bang, upright, ready for action. These guys are very, very fast. And this is why you have to, above all else, treat them with the utmost respect. But you'll see there, by doing everything nice and gently, nice and slowly, we managed to to manoeuvre her without her actually attacking. She didn't attack the box. She literally just stayed in that threat pose. She was warning us that, you know, we don't want to push our luck because she is more than ready to, um, to defend herself. Now, one of the things we need to be careful of here is any kind of catch cup that you use, do be careful with spiders like this. If she decides to bite, she possibly could pierce through this. So we don't want to be running our fingers underneath there, you know. It's probably never going to happen, but we shouldn't take the chance. So what we're going to do now, we're going to keep her on the desk. And we're going to unclip the corners. Now then. So now, our box, if we lift this up, she is free to roam. So what we're going to do, we're going to hold the lid like that. We're going to move it into our enclosure. Now bearing in mind, we have to be very careful when we release her because she could come straight up the wood, out the back, and gone. So we need to be just a little bit aware of what we're doing. And I think what we're going to do, see how she's moved there. Again, be very, very careful at this point. Because now our fingers are going to be close. Like I say, she won't like that surface because it's slippery. She can't gain any, any purchase. So she won't be happy about that. So this is very important. This is why we move at her pace. Another chance for a photograph here. Isn't she gorgeous? Alright, so what we're going to do, I will turn this around slightly. I'm just going to move it around that way a little bit. Because what we want to do now is we want to try and get her to come off of our lid. Now we could just leave her to it, or we can try and just gently move her off. You notice we're Doing rather well at the moment with the threat postures. I think what we're going to do, we're going to go for a pair, pair of tweezers. I'm going to lift this up this way. We're going to get her almost upright. Stunning, stunning spider. Right, now what we're going to do now, we're going to try and just tickle her feet a little bit because we'd like her to walk down. And we're going to try and do this without her going into a full-blown display. We're just going to try her. Nice and gently. We don't mean you any harm. There we go. Yeah, we do it very, very gently. 
It's literally just tickling her. We can now move this out. As long as she has contact with this lid, we have to be ultra careful. We just want that one. There we go. Now she's let go. Now you'll see there, we managed to put her in and take take our box away with absolutely no threat display. This is a Japanese funnel web. You've all heard the stories. But as we said in the beginning, by treating these guys with some respect, taking your time, being assured of with what you're doing and where you're going, we can avoid all of that nasty, nasty behaviour. Now that's not to mean that she will not defend herself. Given any slight provocation or anything like that, she will full on defend herself. So we have to be very, very, very careful. But I think we've shown there that by using these methods, we can move even the most notorious spiders in the hobby. And these guys really are notorious in the hobby. So we've shown we've shown there how these things work and this is what we're trying to get across all these big spiders all these ones with bad reputations they only get bad reputations through poor handling and if we if we follow these simple rules we can all get away and enjoy our spiders an awful lot better now we've set this up we've got it as a bioactive setup she likes an awful lot of moisture so we're looking at the humidity up in at 80% to keep her nice and happy. We keep the mesh tops. You'll notice all of my enclosures have mesh tops. And this is because it allows me to have a high humidity, but without the stagnant air. So I can keep these guys in a perfect situation. Now she's going to sit tight now. She's absolutely gorgeous. That malt has done her no, no harm whatsoever. I mean, she has really put on some size. Now we're going to be looking for a male again now. And uh, hopefully we can try again. And we're, do, we're going to try and keep this one a little bit different this time. And we're going to try and garden the webbing to see if we can't uh, keep this enclosure looking half reasonable, but without destroying too much of her home. We're going to try and teach her to web nicely. <laughs> we'll give it a go. Right. Well, it's a shame we didn't get an egg sack, but... What a wonderful spider we got at the end of it anyway. So we will just keep trying. This is half of the thing with breeding. We need to, you know, get past the hurdles and find out what we done wrong. Maybe she never even got the, got to pair in the first place. We thought we got a pair in, but we wasn't 100% sure. So maybe our guy just never managed to do the job. So um, we'll try again and we'll, we'll just keep pushing on and we'll see what happens. Right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and seen an absolutely wonderful spider. These are a fabulous spider. All right then. Without anything else, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spiders. And I'll see you soon, guys.